Hey, so this is a real quick video that I wanted to show a friend. Um, there was a part that he asked about as far as uh, making animations in Dragon Bones. And um, he mentioned that he has a character that has like uh, dreadlocks or long braids. And I thought, oh yeah, I should probably mention the art of making a mesh. And how something lengthy or flowy or something that can move like a chain or hair can be animated. So I just whipped up this really basic, weird looking mecha type head thing. And I'm just going to show real quick how one way, probably not the best way to animate it if you were to want to build something out of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give some bones to this. I'm going to add a head bone here. I'm not going to bother naming them this time. I'm just going to add a bone real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this mechanical braid thing have multiple bones. And that's good enough for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first take the head, which I'm not going to do anything special with. I'm just going to connect it to this main bone. So it's connected now. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, now it's connected. And these will serve as the braid. Now, you can normally only attach one image to one bone. You can't move multiple bones for one image, but what you can do is you can click the image and go to Property, and you here have the option to give it a mesh. You click that, and then you click Edit Mesh, and then down here you can hit the plus to create. And what you would do, well, before I do that, it's easier if you right click on the image and hit, uh, let's see, hide others. So that image is by itself. Now I'm going to edit the mesh so nothing else gets in the way. And with the plus selected, I would just put some points around it. I've seen others do this, and I'm not really sure what the uh, best practices are, but this has worked for me just enough to kind of isolate the shape and maybe some down the middle and then I'm going to right click to confirm it so now it has the mesh and you can see all the dots and whatnot here and the next thing to do would be add bone to bind first I'm going to bring all the images back well it's just two in this case but I'm going to bring them back show on a lock all I'm going to click the image again, and you have Add Bone to Bind over here. So I click that, and now you can click the bones that you want to bind to the mesh. So you can click all of these. And then Auto Generate Weight. You can manually generate weights, but that's a little beyond the scope, and frankly, not something I'm all that great at. So I usually just Auto Generate. Now, Weights Calculation Complete. Now, with that set up, you can select these this bone and it will move it normally but if you select say this bone you can start to bend it and of course there's room for improvement with your meshing you can add more points move the points and then you can do something like this and each one will respond to the parts and that's what the meshing is all about I mean the weighting you see the weights the colors correspond the brighter the color or something like that the more influence they have on the area so you can actually alter it to make something more or less weighted and one more thing when you make something like this <clears throat> a neat trick is you can select multiple bones like you can grab all these by holding control grab these three bones and then hit control and a number on your keyboard like say control one and you'll make a group now every time you have, every time you hit the button that you hit control one, say you hit one, that activates those bones. And if you rotate them all together, well, you can pull it along. But there are ways to make this work better as far as um, sticking to keeping other parts fixed. And there are more advanced things you can do. I may have accidentally grabbed, yeah, I'm going to have to, um, yeah, I think I accidentally added the root to that group, so 
instead grab that bone and that bone and that bone and just put the command in again and that just changes the group again and now the I don't want the root to be part of it I think I did that again so I'm gonna lock the selection so I can't select the root and now do it one more time control three bone group success okay so now with that group selected I can do like this and that you can animate so if you were to make an animation you could for instance select all the bones hit K for keyframe and go to like frame 24 this is just arbitrary you can pick any frame you want and maybe at frame 12 pick that group do like this maybe at 18 do like this maybe at 6 do the same thing so you have something that goes like this now hmm there it is it's lagged a bit there you go and that is basically of how to make something wobbly or wavy you can mess around with more bones alter the mesh shape and the mesh shape can actually be changed during animation too you know if you want to you can decide to stretch it out for whatever reason and that will become part of the animation you just have to you know rectify it after so sometimes you might have to manually fix the mesh meshing is tricky and I wouldn't mess around with this too much during animation because it gets funny with keyframing them I would just make slight adjustments each time because you have to manually change them and that's something you want to experiment with you want you can use that to make like a tail or a chain or long braids a dress a cape any number of things I'm not gonna save that project but I'll show what I did with my character here oops that's the wrong file I think that's the one yeah that's the wrong file this one okay so the cape I made a mesh for it and it has I think I gave it a group three and I can wave the cape like this which is why and how in the run cycle for instance the cape can do like this because you can just animate the waving by the way, in Dragon Bones, this little box down here allows you to do to control wherever you can see or select objects. The eyes for seeing and the arrows for selectable. And this is bone, this is image. So if you want to make all the images invisible, you will click image visible here. And now you only see the bones. It can be helpful. Or the other way around, you can hide the bones and see only the image. So I think that's enough for now. Uh, any further questions, I am wide open. And I'm going to make more videos, hopefully improve at my delivery and my skills as I go along. So thanks for watching.